Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. We're gonna pick up the tube. Hope you're today, hope you're feeling damned. And also, my lord, hello there, everybody. Uh, welcome to another AQ, first AQ in the south of France, everybody. Um, feeling a little bit silly in there today. So, anyway, but we'll, 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 we'll get on and we'll move forward. So, anyway, it's not about that today, it's about your questions, not my silliness. Okay, so question one today is. Um, your guitar strap length is quite long. Did you always have it very long, or is it something you forced yourself into? And does it benefit you having it longer for reaching certain shapes? Um, it's not... Uh, my guitar, where it sits now, is not... It's not something I ever forced myself into doing it. It's just developed over a period of time. Like, um, when I first started playing... I wanted the guitar super low to be like Billy Joe from Green Day. So I wanted a guitar super low. I wanted the longest strap in the world. And I wanted it around my knees, basically. Um, but then when I got into kind of like Jimi Hendrix more. And also Yngwie Malmsteen. And also, I wanted the guitar low because of John Frusciante as well. Because when I saw him on top of Pops, his guitar was low. It looked cool. Um, but when I got into Jimi Hendrix and saw like he had his guitar really high. And obviously Yngwie Malmsteen had his guitar quite high. Because you can't really do that kind of certain things that Yngwie does with a good low guitar. Um, I bought the guitar up and I probably I had it a lot higher than I do now. I mean, it was. I mean, the top of the guitar was probably about there on me. And I, I've got a couple of pictures somewhere. I just don't know where they are. But um, but yeah, I I I used to have the guitar really high, but over. For years, um, it's got lower and lower and lower. Uh, some guitars I like lower uh, or higher than others. Some, you know, some guitars sit better at different. You know, all guitars are different heights. You know, all all my guitars sit at slightly different heights. None, none of none, none of the same, should I say? But um, but no, I mean, it's not something that I force. I, I don't really force anything like that. It, they just that, that just kind of like uh, where the guitar sits now just kind of like happen naturally, just because that's what feels more comfortable um, to me where I am now. You know, in in a year's time, that could change, and the guitar could be around my neck, you know, or or around, around my knees or my ankles. You know, or I might just be sat down playing because my back might have given up by then. Uh, <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, it wasn't. I, like I said, I don't force anything when it comes to the guitar. What ha I, I just go with what happens. If, if 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 something happens with the guitar where it's like you know this is this is where it's going, this is where it's leading me, so to say. I just kind of go with that and just let it be what it is instead of instead of trying to like you know analyze it and try and understand it or or why am I you know what what why is the guitar here? Or why is it there? Or why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? I just kind of go with it and submit to it and just let it do what it's going to do uh, and don't overthink it. So the guitar height now, to me, um, I like low. You know, it's not super low, but the thing is I'm a really gangly person. I've got really long legs. So, and I've got really long arms as well. I've got long legs and long arms and a very small torso. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like out of proportion. So... The guitar being really low for me works better, actually, to be honest with you. It feels more comfortable for me because I've got big, long limbs and I kind of look like a, you know, a gangly freak, if you will. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it just works better for me. I feel more comfortable, and especially with my with the thumb over the top kind of playing style. It, it, it suits it more because like, I don't really play like like from behind the neck really anymore I, I i do it occasionally every now and again but i just find it more comfy to play and i feel more relaxed and more at ease with the guitar if it's lower and it, i feel it's just kind of it, it becomes i want to say less in the way and more part of me but I, don't, I don't think i don't know if that's the right kind of wording for that but it, it definitely feels kind of like, when, when the guitar's high, I feel like it's kind of like, you know, it, it's kind of, um, uh, not stifling, um, kind of, and not claustrophobic either, but just, just too close, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like, um, I can't think of the exact word I'm trying to use there, that's really annoying. 
But like, it's just kind of like this. It's kind of like dominating. If the guitar's too high, it feels kind of like, you know, a bit of a dominating thing. But if, if I get the guitar to the right height, and the guitar will tell me what height it wants to be at. Because uh, when I'm playing it, I can adjust, I'll just just strap and I'll just be like, that's where it needs to be. I'll just know. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, I'll, I'll just adjust the strap and eventually I'll just play it and like, that's where it needs to be. And that's where it stays from that point on. Um... But I, I I don't like it too high. I don't like it too low. I like it where it, yeah, like I say where it feels right because then it feels like it's part of me instead of kind of like on me. If that makes any sense, I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. But like you know, it, it feels kind of like claustrophobic if it's too high and if it's too low, it's just stupid and you know I, I can't reach it and play it properly. But getting the guitars to the right height is really important. You know, I, I feel like you know to feel them out. You know, you have to get to the right part. Right, hi, I do apologize for everything yours. <laughs> my sleeping pattern's so out of whack right now. Uh, so I do apologize for my yawning. Uh, anyway, um, but no, it's never something I forced. Does it benefit? Uh, does it benefit for reaching certain shapes? Not really, no. I mean, it, well, it, it does me, but not for everyone. I mean, again, because I've got long, long limbs and long legs and, and because of the way I kind of carry myself, um, it, I feel benefit from it. I feel I can play better, emote better and be more relaxed if the guitar's lower than, than it is higher. You know, I feel a lot more kind of like, <sighs> you know, with the guitar low than if it's high, it's like, ah! You know, it feels a bit weird. But I, I used to have a guitar really high. You know, the guitar wasn't always super low for me. It was, you know, I did, I did have it really high for a long time, actually. I'm going to yell again. I do apologise. I'm so sorry. <sighs> how many people just yawned? How, uh, how many people did I infect with my yawn? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway. So, um... So yeah, it's not something I actively sought out to do. It just happened over time. Of it just got lower and lower and lower and lower, and it, where it is now on certain guitars, like my red strap, my white strap, the gem, you know, all the guitars I've got here, I've got the right height where I'm like, that's really comfy. You know what I mean? Like, like the the heights are really, really, really comfy and really happy. So um, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel more com confident, comfortable. And also, because the guitar isn't wrapped around my neck, I don't feel kind of like, you know... Um, I keep wanting to say claustrophobic. That's not the word I'm looking for. I kind of feel like... Uh, I can't think of the word at all. It's just not there. But um, but no, I mean, there's no real... You know, there's benefit in it for me personally. From my... You know, for, because I, I, I... It feels better to me. But for anybody else, it might not work. You know, it's... It, Strap height is is a very personal thing. It's like string gauge and you know anything in guitars, but it's all very personal to to you. Yeah, you know, what what do you like? What you know what makes you feel good and feel happy and 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 make you play best? You know, uh, to me, I've, I the guitar having it where it is now feels better than it did. Well, it feels better now to have it lower than it did in my you know early years when I had it really high. So. It's just something that's developed over time, you know. It's, it's not it's not anything I've kind of like actively sought out or trying to look cool or anything like that. It just it just feels better down there than it does higher or super low, you know. Wherever my guitar sits, whichever guitar I'm playing, that's where it needs to be. If that makes any sense, it's just, I know I've done it so I've messed around with strap height so much, I, and and I, I I just know when it feels right. If that makes any sense. So, um, but yeah, um, no, I mean. Like I say, it doesn't. There's no real benefit unless you know. For, well, there's for me, but like it might not work for you. Um, but I, I just it feels more comfortable, and I can feel like I can kind of like, kind of. This is gonna sound really silly and zen, but I, I feel like I'm become more one with the guitar when it's lower than higher. When it's higher, I feel a bit more kind of clinical with it, whereas with it's low. It feels more relaxed, and I feel more relaxed. And in in so both of us being relaxed, we can kind of like merge better than just kind of like being kind of like you know clinical with each other and like you know being like you know I want to do this or whatever. But uh, yeah, so um, I just I just feel better having it lower and more comfortable and just happier in general, really. So uh, so yeah, um, so yeah, anyway. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope that's answered your question. I, 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 I don't really have anything else to add to that, I don't think. 
you can forget playing every breath you take <laughs> with the guitar strap where it is for me because it'll break your hands, especially the F sharp. Ah, the F sharp had nine crumbs. Anyway, um, but no, I mean, there's no, you know, it, it, it's just, it's just what feels right to me it, at this point in time. Yeah, like I say, in a, in a year's time, it could be totally different. I could be like really high. You know, in a year's time, it could be uh, a centimeter or two centimeters higher. You know, it, it's just, it's a variable thing. I think it, I reckon strap height is just one of those things that kind of, kind of fluctuates. Uh, and you end up kind of like, um, kind of plateauing, if you will, on certain kind of heights for a while. And then like, you know, your taste change and you either go higher or you go lower. And then you'll plateau on that kind of level as well. It's, you know, it's, it's much in the same way as kind of anything really. And then certain things with the guitar or music, you know, you, you find those things. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I hope that's a question. Moving on to question two now. Okay, so question two is, have you tried a PV5150 or 6505 or a Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister 18? Uh, I haven't tried the PVs, no. Uh, the 5150 is, is an amp I've always wanted to try, but I've never actually tried one. Um... I think I've seen a few around in guitar shops when I've been into guitar shops, but I've never tried one. Uh, like I said, I'd always, I've always really wanted to, but kind of like, you know, it's always been one of those kind of cases where you, you, you can't kind of get to them, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, it's, it's a bit difficult to kind of like, you know, kind of go on that if it's dead miles away. But we never had one in Old Hat or anything like that. In all fairness, I don't think Norman would have bought anything like that in anyway. Um... I have tried the Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister though, uh, and I didn't like it. I doubt, I've tried a lot of uh, Hughes and Kettner amps. Um, they approached me many years ago actually to kind of like be a kind of an endorsee, and I tried a lot of uh, Tube Meisters. Uh, the, the, I tried the Tube Meister. Uh, there's the Statesman. I tried. Uh, I've tried a lot of the others as well, like uh, it Switchblade. Or I don't know. I can't remember what they're called now. But I, I, I didn't get on with any of the sounds of any of the Hughes and Kettner's one, uh, the amps. They, they just kind of had this kind of scratchy mid-range that I really didn't like. It, it just didn't work for me at all. Like, other people make them sound amazing, but for me, when I was playing through it, it was a good sound, but it wasn't my sound, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, it just wasn't anything there that made me go, yes, I want, you know, I want to use this amp. It was just kind of like, meh. I don't, I'm not feeling it, you know what I mean? It just didn't, it, it, it's much in the same way when I tried Mesa Boogie amps uh, or Blackstar. There's just nothing in them for me. You know, it, I, you know but in certain people's hands, they sound amazing. Like Andy Timmons or Mesa Boogie sounds incredible. And, um, you know, there's other people who, you know, Uli John Roth with his Blackstar sounds amazing. But I, I, I personally, when I play for them, I just don't like them, you know. And, and the, the Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister 18 was one of those amps where, I remember trying it, and within the first couple of seconds, I was like, "No, nope. this is just, this isn't this isn't for me. This is a no no amp for me." So, um, so I have tried that, uh, and I didn't like any of them. I've, I've tried so many Hughes and Kettner amps in kind of like in a vain attempt to try and find one that I like, and I never found any. You know, they were always just kind of either too too shrill or too scratchy in the mid range, and they didn't quite have the right kind of tonality and smoothness that I want from an amp. Um, so no, I mean, I, I've tried, I have tried the Hughes and Kettners, but, um, none really worked for me, but, uh, going back to the PV 5150, no, I've never, I've never tried one of those, but I'd really like to, at some point, I really, really want to try a, a, a 5150 because, you know, Eddie, um, but I don't, I don't think I'll like it, but I stand to be corrected if that makes any sense, you know, cause, um, there's, uh, Every time I watch a demo of a 5150, I'm like, I really want to try it. You know, it's just got that kind of pull uh, pull for me where I'm like, mm, looks cool. Loads of gain. Happy days for Dave. Uh, I, I especially like the free channel one, but I think that's the Fender version of Eddie's amp. The free channel one where it's got clean and t like, it, well, it's got free channels and like free present styles. And it's a big beast. It's, I think it's the last incarnation of a 5150. I don't know if it's even called a 5150, but... Um, but yeah, I, I, I do really want to try a 5150 because I've never tried one. Like I said, I've seen one. I've seen a few. But I've never been in a, a position or a situation where I can actually plug into one and spend a bit of time with it. Uh, well, in all fairness, I don't need to spend 
a great deal of time with it. I'll just need to you know, plug into it and I'll know within the first couple of seconds whether it's, it's a yay or a nay. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, but again, you know, that's the thing about amps is, you, you know, you know, you'll know instinctively if something's right or wrong sometimes, you know, it, it, there's, there's certain things, you know, it just, uh, you know, stick out a million miles to you and go, hang on a minute, that's not right. You know, and, and the Hughes and Kettner, unfortunately, was for that. You know, they weren't bad sounding amps, but they, they, they scratched and I didn't like the kind of noise that there's this weird frequency in the mid range that really gets gets my kind of like goat if you will this is really gnarly noise and i really didn't like it and it really just was like mm, i don't like that i just it just doesn't appear on it and it was in it seems to be in every hughes and kettner amp and i don't know why it was in every amp i got to, to hear it all the time um the statesman was the worst for it i think it was called the statesman i demoed it a while back it was a friend of mine actually i didn't i didn't try that uh thingy but uh, i tried it I, that was a friend of mine who it's got a recording studio in uh, back home, but but it, that was the worst for it. it. Had this real horrible frequency above frequencies, and it was really weird, and it just was really uncomfortable, and it, it just like sat weird in my ears, and I really I, I struggled to play it comfortably because it just felt bad. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, it wasn't a bad sounding amp, but I could hear this sound, and it was really affecting my playing you know because it just didn't feel right and i'm sure we all we all know what that means you know we, we all know what that feels like you know when you're playing for a sound that you're like oh no you know it, it really 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 affects how you play and, and and your ability to play as well actually i think it really has a massive impact on uh what you can and cannot do you know with with the guitar so um but yeah so i have tried to tune myself but no, no 5150 over 6505 the 6505 looks really cool. That's fun. That's a fun amp as well. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I I wouldn't try Hughes and Kettner again, not even out of curiosity, just because I've tried so many, and none of them ever worked for me. So I wouldn't try them again. But I would definitely try a 5150. I'd like try all different incantations of a 5150 as well, because it changed so many times. It'd be very interesting to uh, see the difference. But anyway, um. Anyway, uh, so, okay, go move on to question three now. Okay, so I hope it's such a question. Uh, okay, question three is, uh, I stamped my foot because that's the kind of guy I am today when I'm in my kind of half non-weird, drowsy slate, state, state, slate. Uh, uh. Anyway, question three. Um, do you have any tips for finding your own voice on guitar? Right, um, finding your own voice on guitar is just a case of time and practice and learning and taking things you want from your heroes like um like for instance me like you know i mean i i don't i don't really feel like i have a unique voice on the guitar at all i, I don't i feel it's i feel that you can hear you can hear where all the things that i play come from yeah you can hear john Fashanti, you can hear Jimi hendrix uh, you can hear peter green mike mccready and rory gallagher you know, with every now and again, Paul Kossoff pokes his head in, Dave Gilmore pokes his head in. Um, you know, th there's, there's certain kind of things, a bucket head as well, he pokes his head in every now and again. Um, and that's kind of what I, that, that, that's the kind of thing I wanted. And, you know, I, I wanted to be able to kind of play in a style that kind of like encompasses all them. You know what I mean? Like, um, I wanted to be able to play like a song, a, a, a solo that kind of sounds like if you, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, I wanted to play in a style that, like, you know, if you were to get all my heroes and smash them together into a ball, this is what they would sound like. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near as good as any of my heroes. It's just, you know, st I'm, I stand in the shadows uh, of, of, you know, giants. You know, uh, we, you know, I really do. But, but, um,. We can always strive for that, you know what I mean? We can always strive to be as good, and that's the point, I think. I mean, and you've got to kind of push yourself to that. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, that's what I think you need to do. I thought, like, you know, if, 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 you're, if your heroes are like mine, and you've got John Fashanti and Jimi Hendrix, say, for instance, like, you know, you can take things from Jimmy, and then you can incorporate them into a John Fashanti kind of style, 
and vice versa. You know, you can take things from John and incorporate them into like a Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. So I think the key, <clears throat> more than anything, is to kind of like find find what you like. You know, the sound of and the feel of, and 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 just kind of like you know what what gets you here musically. And when somebody plays, what are they playing it really gets you you know what what is it that you feel you know over kind of like you know the te technicality of it or tonality of it or any of that what does it make you feel and why is it making you feel that and and, and can you not recreate it but can you take that feeling that they make you feel and when you play can you feel it through your own playing if that makes any sense, you know, like, like, yeah, like when you, when you, <clears throat> I'll give you an example. So when Jimi Hendrix hits in Machine Gun, the Band of Gypsies version in, at the Fillmore East in 1970, when Jimi hits that big note in Machine Gun and it's, Wah! and he just screams and he just holds it and then he hits it again and the universe goes whoosh, 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 over the top of it. That just sends me to like you know the, the the pain and the sadness and the anger and the aggression and and just the, the that's a man screaming you know that is that, that 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 that's the equivalent of somebody just in the street screaming their lungs out that note is just like just pure everything of jimmy in that note it's, it's just it's just that you know you can and i can feel it and it's just there and it's just this oh god that kind of thing like and that's what i want to be able to do i want to be able to recreate that but that that's what i mean by that like you know that you can feel that so how so can i recreate that so when i when i hit a note can i um feel that emotion you know if i if i hit a note and it screams on my guitar i want my guitar to scream because either i'm in in pain internally or, or something's annoyed me or upset me and I just need to vent something. Can I get that feeling out and can I feel it in the same way Jimmy makes me feel that, that note, you know? And and then can I get other people to feel that as well? That's that, And that's really important. That's kind of like the next level. That's where I want to be, you know what I mean? Because... To me, I can do certain things now where I can where I can feel some things that John Fashanti does that, that John's done in the past that made me feel I can kind of get myself to that point. Not all the time, just to, you know, every now and again. And the same thing with Jimmy, I can kind of reach that point for me. But my 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 goal is to get kind of reach out to grab you, you know, with that with my playing. So when I play, you can understand my emotion of what's going on at that point in time instead of me kind of like having to kind of. Um, you know, I don't have to explain it. It's it's just what it is, if that makes sense. And, that, and that's what I really want. I want to be able to kind of like go to that place and take you with me, you know, uh, you know, and just try and either make things better or, or, you know, or make you feel less alone or whatever. That's what I want to do. And Jimmy could do that and John could do that and Peter can do that and Rory can do that and Mike McCready can do that and Paul Kossoff could and Buckethead can in certain respects. And, you know, some of these other guys can. So it's like, that's where I want to go. So... That's what I'm pursuing. And I think that's another thing as well about finding your own voice on guitar. I think you have to have a very clear sense of direction. Like, I'm going that way because that's what I want to do over there. All this over here and all stretching around to there is not what I want to do. I want to pursue that. You know, because the thing is, the really cool thing about the guitar is you can pursue that bit like a madman for years and years and years and years and years. I can go this way. I can go keep going that way and that way and that way. And when you get to a point down that way where you're happy, you can, all this is still there. So you can go, right, I've gone enough that way now. Now I'll go this way. It's brilliant. You know, it's absolutely brilliant. So, um, you know, don't be afraid to pursue something like massively and alienate other things because you can always come back to other things. You know what I mean? You don't have to, to go, oh, I can only do this. No, you don't. You, you can do this for as long as you want until you go, you know what, I fancy doing this now. You know what I mean? It's cool. But um, but as far as developing your own voice, I really do believe you've got to... Um, 
kind of find like you know you, you you've got to find your heroes in you, and then it, I always say this. It comes back to that John Mayer line: "You sound like yourself when you fail to sound like your heroes," and that is the best line in the world for any guitarist to know, understand, and abide by, because we all want to be. We've all got influences. We've all got somebody who made us want to play. And we've all got somebody we want to play like. You know, there's, there's nobody out there who sounds totally, like, you know, unique, really. No one. Not even Jimi Hendrix. Because Jimi had elements of B.B. King, Buddy Guy, Curtis Mayfield, uh, uh, even bits like Eric Clapton in there. There was all sorts in Jimi's playing. You know, there was because they were, they were his heroes. You know, um... You know, Robert Johnson sounded, you know, he, he, he had his, he had a kind of his, his own sound, if you will. But, you know, he, he learned it off other blues guys. You know, same thing with Sunhouse and all these other people. You know, it, it developed somewhere. But, you know, I mean, it's like a lot of these guitarists, you know, I, I look at people like um, Ingve Malmsteen and it's just Richie Blackmore on speed. You know what I mean? That's what Ingve Malmsteen is to me. He's just Richie Blackmore, but like hyped up. Um, although he's, he, he, he defends it to the hill that he's got nothing to, like, you know, he doesn't owe he, he, Richie Batman one an influence on him. Like, yeah, Paul the other one, Ingve. Um, anyway, but, like, you know, and, and Jimmy Jimmy's influences were all over the place. Rory's influence were all over the place. You know, you can hear, but uh, you can hear uh, Muddy Waters. You can hear some, you know, I, those, those classic Irish kind of, like, traditional folk tunes. You can hear, uh, you can hear jazz, country, you know, all these artists and these amazing kind of players all wear their kind of influences on their sleeves. You know, you can hear... Yeah, I can. Funny enough, I can hear a lot of Rory in Slash. Like, you know, I know, I know Slash was a big Rory fan, but you can, I can hear a lot of Rory Gallagher in Slash's guitar playing, especially with November Rain solo. There's, there's bits in November, November Rain solo where I, I'd love to play it, but I can't. Um, there's bits in that where I'm like, that's just Rory Gallagher. Gallagher, sorry. Um, you know, it's just him. So it's, it's really, really cool. But I think that's the key to developing your own kind of playing is, is to kind of like li listen to your favorite guitarists and take what you want from them and go, I really like this about, I, li I like this in this song and I like this in this song from our two artists. So what happens if I combine that with that and, and kind of go from there really? So just, just kind of try and kind of like, more things together and like I say that line of like you know we fail we sound like ourselves when we fail to sound like a heroes is so key to this you know what i mean and it, but it, it take but bear this in mind that this isn't one of those things that like you know takes a week or a month or even a year to develop your own voice takes a long long time it could be up to a decade to develop your own voice you know what i mean it, it ta it's not one of those things where you can just kind of start just down the line and a week later you've got your own individual 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 sound um you know you, it, it takes a long time you've got to be in it for the long haul and you've got to be in it for the right reasons and you've got to be in it to know that eventually it'll happen but you've got to give it time to to, to happen you know you can't just be kind of like diving head first into like you know in, into into it and going like you know oh in a week's time i'll be the next Jimi hendrix or whatever it's not going to work so you have to be patient. You have to know it's not going to be quick and you just, it's going to take a lot of time. But it's worth it. It's as simple as that. It really is worth it, you know. So um, so I'm going to have to move on. Otherwise, I'll talk about that forever and ever and ever. But uh, finding your own voice and guitar, like I say, it does just take time. But it's, it is just a case of like trying to balance your heroes in you. You know what I mean? And also feeling the emotion they feel in you and then being able to convey that emotion to others. You know, and I, I feel that's kind of like, you know, that that's kind of a key to that, really. So, um, so yeah, just um, for what that's worth. I mean, I hope some of that kind of made sense anyway. But um, but no, then that that's the key to kind of like finding your own voice on the guitar is, is just kind of like, you know, just morphing things together and, and finding your way on your path to convey what you want to convey through music, you know what I mean, and, and through through the guitar, you know, just finding that kind of thing, finding that balance, if you will. So, um, oh, weird, weird little, weird little beastie on my pedal board there. 
Um, but yeah, so is there a, well, there's there's a lot more I could say on that, but I'm I'm not I'm going to stop there because I will talk about that forever and a day if I'm not careful. So, um, I hope some of that made some kind of sense. Um, but like I say, it really is it really is important to kind of like you know to to look at your heroes and combine your heroes and use um, what. You know their emotions. In fact, I say, can you convey their emotions? They bring out in you through you with you through you, in you. My God. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway. I hope I made some kind of sense. Anyway, I'm gonna have to move on to uh, question four, everybody, because I like I say question three. I could sp I could talk and talk and talk and talk for hours about question three, and I will if I'm not careful. So I'm gonna move on to final question of the day, everybody. Question four. <laughs> Okay. okay, okay, question four is, uh, would you recommend the vintage Peter Green V100 and are Wilkerson components any good? Would I recommend the vintage Peter Green 100, V100? No! And here's why. Uh, if you can find an old one, uh, like uh, mine's from 2015, um, if you can find one from 2015, yes. New one, no. Uh, about a month ago, I was in a guitar shop in in Grimsby called Gallagher, Gallagher's. It would be because it's it's British, uh, or would it, would it always be Gallagher? Cause it's an Irish name, isn't it? I'm just gonna call it Gallagher just because I think it sounds cooler. Um, so I was in this guitar shop and he had a vintage V100 Peter Green um, lemon drop, and I saw it and I looked at it and I thought that doesn't look as good as mine does. Like you know, the the, the burst on it looked crap the, the the flame look crap the guitar itself looked crap it just looked bad like it wasn't like mine but when, when when i unboxed mine for the first time i was like my god now that's a great looking guitar yeah and and it still it's a gorgeous it is it's, it's like you know absolutely stunningly beautiful looking guitar but this one looked crap and i thought i've got to try it i've got to try it i need to know i need to know so I, I went over to the rack and it was on the wall and I picked it down and I held it and I was like, no, I don't even want to plug it in. It was light as a feather. Um, it felt bad. There was there was sharp frets. Everything about the guitar was bad. It was just, I couldn't, in all fairness, I'm still a bit kind of like flummoxed by it. There's a word for you. I'm, I'm, I am, I'm totally like, what? It's like, how could it be so bad? Like, it, it really didn't... I, I really didn't understand and don't understand. Like, it, I didn't even plug it in. I was just like, it just looks crap. And I went to the owner of the shop. I said, this is crap. And he goes, yeah, he says, it's, it doesn't sound good either. And uh, I trust him. Uh, you know, he, he wouldn't lie. And I, I believe him as well. It just, it looked bad. It felt bad. Yeah, you know, everything about the guitar was just like, no. You know, it just screamed, No. And I was just like, what have they done? You know, and it's the same with a lot of... I, I, there was a few vintages there, and they all felt the same. Rubbish. They all felt rubbish. Same with the gold top that I got recently. Like, you know, I couldn't believe how bad that was until I fixed it up. You know, and I'm really glad I did fix it up now, because I say, Bob's got it, so that's all good. So, um... But I, I was shocked. And I didn't even plug it in. I had no desire to plug it in. I just put it back on the rack and was like, nope, not interested. Um, yeah, so, uh, disappointment, I don't think even was the word, to be honest with you, I think it was, it was just, like, really, really annoying, I was just a bit like, oh, what are you doing, you know, um, so, would I recommend the Pretty Green Vintage Lemon Drop, not a new one, like I say, if you, if you can find an old one, I say, mine's from 2015, it's so much better than the new one, I mean, even the old V6 icons are, like, better than the new V6. I don't know what's going on with Vintage. I really don't know what's going on with them at all. I'm not... I'm not... I'm confused by it. Because they're so... They used to be so good. You know, I've got I've got the V6. I've got a V6 the icon just sat over there in the corner. And it's amazing. You know, my Lemon Drop's amazing guitar. And, and uh, you know, the Flying V I had was amazing. The other two V6s I've got, were had, sorry, were amazing. And, like, you know, 
and somebody, uh, I do apologise, uh, won't be a day video about my phone dinging. And all these, other, all these other kind of like vintages I tried years ago were amazing. And now they're just gone. I just couldn't. And, and, and honestly, I really honestly, and I'm, I'm not lying here. I really honestly couldn't believe how bad this lemon drop felt, looked. And I, I say, uh, I, tr I trust him and, and would sound as well. You know, the setup was bad. The neck was bad. The neck felt crap, actually. That's why I didn't even bother with it. Uh, well, it was li it was literally a case of I picked it. I, like say it was on the wall there. I picked it down. I went like this. No. I didn't. Even, I didn't even have to plug it in to know that I was not gonna like it. It was literally that quick. It, it was just like no, because because I'm so used to mine, because uh, I I know mine so well, and I know the weight, and I know the feel, and I know how they respond and and what they do. This was just not worth it. It was not. I. I wouldn't. You know. I wouldn't be. I. I won't. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I just wouldn't. I, I just. It's just. It's just a no. It's just a no. Um. Yeah. I was shocked. I was really shocked, and I was really upset actually as well because, uh, my lemon drop is one of my favourite guitars, uh, of all time. You know, that's that's the that's one of the guitars that will be with me for the rest of my life. You know, along with my RTL fifty nine and. And my Epiphone Les Paul, you know, they're my, they're my Les Pauls, if you will, you know, those those three are, um, you know, that's if I want my Les Paul sound, that's that's the ones I go to, and I didn't bring any of them with me because I'm clever like that. I, I should have bought one of my Les Pauls, but I didn't. But it's okay because my friend's got a Revelation RTL fifty nine, so we're okay. Um, so if I need a Les Paul, I know where I can go to get one. So, um, but but no, I mean, I I can't recommend a new one. I really can't. I can't recommend any new vintage guitars. I'm being perfectly honest, because uh, the ones I've tried just do not match up to the old ones. I would say if you're gonna, if you want a vintage, go look for the older ones. I mean, uh, one second, everybody. Because my um, this vintage V6, which I'll do a video on at some point. Um, this is from. This is a 2008 uh, V6, and. It's just amazing. Like, the pickups are amazing. The neck is... Oh, my God. The neck is so good. The frets are good. The pots feel good. The select switch, the tremolo, the machine heads. The... Everything about this guitar is good. This is just an awesome, awesome guitar. And I have refinished it in white because... Um, I always did. <laughs> I had a black one. But um, my main one, which is actually here, which I got reunited with the other day, actually, because he, he lives here now. Uh, I'm actually gonna have to do a comparison between the two. I might do it on camera. People of YouTube, would you like to see a comparison between this V6 and my my V6 that was that lives down here now? But I, I, it's not mine anymore. But uh, would you like to see a comparison between the two and see if there is one? Let me know in the comment section below. Let, let me know if there's a, if it's a difference. Anyway, but this is a great guitar. Let's say, um, you know, this is a really awesome guitar, and I love this guitar. It's, the neck's amazing on it. Everything about it feels good. Um, you know, it's just a great guitar. The pickups are fantastic. Everything about this guitar rules the day. So, um, I don't really know what's happened to Vintage. They've just gone off the rails, uh, in my opinion. But um, but I can't I can't recommend them. I really can't. I mean, and, and that really, 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 really kind of breaks my heart. I would love to be able to recommend Vintage again, but I just can't because of my experiences with them. It's been, of late, very, very bad. You know, it's been very, 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 very bad. So I can't recommend Vintage, no. I mean, in all fairness, if you're after a Les Paul, I would recommend a Revelation RTL 59 or the RTL 55. You know, either one of them, you know, you're, you're, it's just a better, it's a better call in my opinion, to be honest with you. I, I really do reckon it. Or, or failing that, get like, like a Gretsch Electromatic like that. I won't really cut, that doesn't really sound like a Les Paul though. That's why I said when you know I mentioned Les Pauls at the Lemon Drop, the RTL fifty nine, my Epiphone Les Paul, my Les Pauls. That's not a Les Paul, in my opinion. The the, the Electromatic, the, the the Duo Jet, basically, has got a sound totally of its own. Especially with these pickups, it's not it's not really a it's not a Les Paul tone. It's something totally different, which um, which I, I like. You know, it's, it's something a little bit different. But it's not a Les Paul. You know, that isn't a Les Paul. But you know, say, saying that, I'm sure you could get pickups in there that would make it sound a bit more or less poorly but i like the uniqueness of what that does on its own but anyway i'm not talking about that uh but yeah i would recommend the revelation rtl 59 personally over the the new lemon drops because they're just 
in all fairness, I think the RTL 59 is a better Les Paul than the Lemon Drop is anyway, personally, for me. I like the RTL a lot more. Um, it's just... Um, it's more in keeping with the sound than the feel of the old Les Pauls that I've played in the past. Like, I, I, remember, I remember trying a 1970s Les Paul... Uh, that somebody had put uh, it came to old hat to have original PAF 1959 uh, double white humbuckers in it and I remember trying this 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 old Les Paul with the original 59 Les Paul uh, white uh, white uh, double cream I think they're called uh, humbuckers and it was just that's the sound of no, when, I, when I played I was like that's a Les Paul sound you know what I mean I, I know that sounds a bit weird to say but it had that aggressive Telecaster kind of thing to it, you know, and, and you hear that gets battered around so much, like, you know, like an old Les Paul sounds like a, a Telecaster on steroids. But I feel that's so true. You know, these old Les Pauls with the old the old PAF humbuckers, they really do have that kind of bark of a of a telly. But they've got more, if that makes any sense. And they've got this kind of spiky mid range and I love it. It's so cool. Um But yeah, so and in all fairness, uh, the closest thing I've found to that is the RTL 59. Personally, you know, uh, I don't, I don't really. I mean, when I had my uh, my R, my R7 Gibson R7 Gold Top, it had burst buckers and they sounded great, but they didn't sound like uh, that classic Les Paul tone. They're a bit too dark. They're a bit overwhelmed and uh, too dark. But you know, each their own. But um, but yeah. Uh, would I recommend it? No, I wouldn't. And you also said, are workers and components any good? Uh, yes, I mean. The Wilkerson machine heads on this guitar, the bridge and the pickups. Yeah. I I would happily recommend Wilkinson parts any day of the week. You know, tremolos, machine heads, pickups. Uh, the only problem I have with vintages, uh, the older guitars in these vintages, is the pots are small pots. So they're just the unbranded. They're not Wilkinson pots. They're just those small pots like that. And they eventually die. You know, um, my vintage that's down at my friend's house down there that that's got a replacement volume pot because it died my vintage my 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 uh my lemon drop actually has replaced everything apart from the pickups um on the cycle switch is original as well but all the kind of all the pots in that but it's, it's wired in a weird way now but anyway but uh works and components yeah yeah pickups tremolos machine heads hardware in general yes definitely recommend anything works and like that but as far as the vintage V100 Peter Green goes, I can't recommend it. I can't recommend any vintage guitars right now. I really can't. Just because of my experiences. You know, I'm sure there's good ones, but I haven't I haven't played a good one in... A, a good new one in a long time. You know, um, the the good ones that I've tried are the old ones. You know, like like this beast here and, you know, um, and, my, and my Lemon Drop and my other one and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to... Um, it's hard. I, I, I would feel bad to recommend them. I, I, it wouldn't feel right for me to recommend a vintage at this point in time. You know, I, I just don't feel it's a good idea, and it feels wrong for me to do it because I wouldn't buy one. You know, I bought the gold top, and that was my last straw with vintage. Um, you know, I wouldn't. I won't be buying. Oh well, unless it's an old one. You know, if it's if it's an old vintage, I'd I would buy it, but I won't be buying a new vintage anytime soon. I just wouldn't buy one. So um. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so sadly, you know, that's that's the way that is. But Wilkerson hardware pickups, yes, definitely. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Anyway, I do apologise. Uh, I'm going to have to get off everybody. So uh, thank you very much for your questions. I hope I've answered them okay. I hope they've made some kind of sense. Uh, if you want to submit a question for A&Q, the uh, description box below has a uh, an email link. Just send uh, your questions to that email link and I will get to it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, everybody. Um... Uh, next video, we jump back to England. Uh, <laughs> is it the next video? One sec. No. No, it's not. I apologise. It's not the next video, we jump back to England. We're still here. But, um... Yeah, there's, there's, there's one more video I did on... Uh, well, I'm not going to tell you too much about it. You'll, you'll see it. It's hysterical. It's, it's, it's so bad. But anyway, uh, hope, hopefully, hopefully it'll be slightly enjoyable. Anyway, <laughs> shut up, Dave. He knows how to big himself up, doesn't he? He's the he's the ultimate salesman. Dave Simpson, ultimate salesman. 
or not. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I uh, hope I've answered your questions okay. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again for another one on Friday. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. And uh, yes, uh, goodbye now. Thank you for watching. Ha ha!